oversupply of inventory. It's recession. It's a recession. Recession starting at this point. Recession. The word on everybody's mind. Seems like you can hardly go a day without the dreaded R word coming up. And one thing is for sure, the media is playing a huge role in the public perception of a market, and can make it look as though a crashing market is the best time for buying. Let's face it, public spending has always been manipulated by the media. And with the world we live in, we are constantly kept numb and optimistic. But now, even the media is changing its tune. And if the global media is shifting gears and getting the public ready, you know we're in for a long and messy ride. The United States has enjoyed an era of growing returns, with little to no trouble. Of course, it's nothing like the baby boomers, but still, the economy has been on an upturn. Since 2010, the S&P 500 has had a total return of a staggering 357%. The ones lucky enough to have invested in and ridden this wave really must be feeling like stonks personified. The market has been crushing down since the beginning of the year, and while the so-called experts and analysts will have you think it's just another day, recent reports show that's the farthest from the truth. It's making everyone, including JP Morgan, quiver in their boots. During the post-2008 recession bull run, investors basically had no worries. The strategy in previous recessions has always been to buy during the dip and profit immensely, but it won't work this time. Every period we saw a drawdown, the market recovered quickly and reached a new all-time high. Given these facts, one has to wonder what all the fuss is about as the current drawdown is nothing compared to at least a number of situations in the past that ultimately resulted in a stronger and better market price. The answer lies in two different things, and once we go over them, you will understand why both retail and institutional investors today are legitimately afraid to invest any more in a market that is likely to falter. Before, we had it easy. When the market dipped, we had the Fed to protect us and bail out most of the important financial institutions. But after years of monetary abuse, especially after the downturn of March 2020, the Federal Reserve has had a problem not witnessed since the early 80s. And that problem is the rising inflation that threatens to envelop everything. In order to combat this issue, the Fed is raising rates and cutting down on their help. To many experts, this line of thinking means that the era of easy money is done, and now the market will need to survive without the steroid and supplements constantly being injected by the Federal Reserve. Naturally, this led to a massive sale in speculative growth stocks. Let's take the example of Zoom, which has been decimated from its peak price in October of 2020. The 80% decline is shocking to many, but excuses such as the end of COVID-19 and the opening of in-person businesses seem to keep the public at bay. The S&P 500 has fallen 20%, and if that doesn't tell you the market is imploding, I don't know what will. If the situation is so dire, then what is keeping the markets from crashing down? The answer lies at the top of the rankings in corporations, such as Apple and Saudi Aramco, which have held down the market in times of uncertainty and shock. Aramco especially has kept its price up the last few months, but even an oil corporation like theirs has been dipping recently, although Apple too has had a fall of almost 23% in the last six months, which investors and consumers alike are getting nervous about, as they should be. Speaking of Apple, its place at the top is not without controversy, as at a recent earnings call, Many questions about the upcoming trend were entirely ignored and questions have been raised regarding the legitimacy of its reports. When asked by Katie Hubbardy of Bloomberg about the demands from consumers bringing about change in Apple, CEO Tim Cook proceeded to dodge the questions, as if he was Neo in the Matrix. This is indicative of how the rest of the market is behaving, and executives such as Tim Cook can only delay the inevitable for only so long. Eventually, the truth will come to light regarding changing consumer behavior that has become apparent in the last year or so. That is also why the big banks like JP Morgan are predicting a recession that unfolds like a slow-moving train and bulldozes everything in its path instead of an overnight market collapse. And that is exactly what we are seeing right now. And even more than that is the feel of the market, which hasn't exactly felt like a warm bed of roses recently. Guess I'm not the only one losing sleep at night. Let's take a listen to Michael Forelli, chief US economist at JP Morgan, whose words should serve as a warning to all. According to Michael Forelli, the economy has a favorable momentum right now, and that is mostly because of the jobs being added by the Labor Department. But Forelli also warns that once financial conditions tighten up, we will be setting ourselves up for the possibility of a recession hitting us in the next few quarters. In short, the bailouts and handouts from the government were great and all, but we will have a reckoning of sorts when it all comes crashing down, and we are already feeling it now. As the dollar index jumps up to record levels and the Federal Reserve continues to tighten up, we will see imports become cheaper and exports exponentially more expensive on a world stage. 
This means that U.S. companies, which hold a dominating position within the S&P 500, will have a much rougher time selling stuff outside their borders. A wide array of financial sectors are expected to be hit with mortgage rates already surpassing 6%. We can be sure that the affordability of the housing market will grind to a halt. This will lead to further repercussions as the fear of stagflation overtakes the market and acts as a double-edged sword with inflation on one side and unemployment and terrible growth on the other. As you may have guessed, this is a recipe for disaster, with Michael Farelli further explaining how Jerome Powell, chair of the Federal Reserve, may have misspoken when he said he would raise the rate by 50 points, then raised it by 75 points only a month later. In other words, the Federal Reserve agrees with the public that the recession is coming and is preparing for it. What remains absolutely true is that the financial sector is at a crossroad. We can either crash the economy or let inflation spiral out of control. But the media and banks have us believe that the dreams of a soft landing are completely possible. Soon enough, Jerome Powell will have the toughest job in America, trying to engineer short-term pain in order to save us from long-term disaster. But as many see it, the disaster has been brewing for decades, and the generations before us, like the boomers and Gen X, are as much responsible for it as we are.